All right, everyone, it's your boy, Zach, and uh, uh, looking forward to a good day. I was doing a bunch of proofreading yesterday, so that's what you see here. This is the files, and then here's the galleys I sent out to a bunch of uh, proofreaders. I got through uh, two of them yesterday and then sent out the payment. I'll be going through the other uh, five today. And then, uh, so tomorrow, uh, I should have the final, you know, uh, proofs uh, for the book. Uh, that'll go out one more time to people, you know, um, uh, to check for any um, uh, mistakes or typos or plot holes or anything like that. Dialogue can uh, handle a bunch of plot holes. If you forget to write a scene, you just have someone saying, you know, hey, we got the laser gun at the, the factory. <laughs> and then they got a then then you understand why they have a laser gun uh but anyway um i've uh this is doing, doing a lot of gail simone stuff i did uh, uh plastic man and then i did uh, two days ago and then i did domino yesterday and now i'm doing this uh so this is a uh, gail simone aka fail simone aka i don't even know what her real name is gail simone is a pen name um but uh gail simone is uh, a little problem <laughs> a little problem a little, little troublemaker um, uh, she came into the comic book industry like 15 years ago by uh, weaponizing gender, uh, specifically the women in refrigerators trope, was it, which is a theory that works very well if you ignore uh, everything that disproves the theory. The theory is that women are mainly used as props and victims to prop up the male hero, except for there is literally hundreds of covers of Batman being in danger or Robin being in danger or any male hero being in danger. But uh her shtick is that uh she doesn't just write characters but she somehow owns them when gail writes a character or gloms onto them some she she puts out this pheromone this cat piss that i own this i own batgirl and if i get kicked off of batgirl because uh the sales were low and i wasn't turning in scripts on time which is what happened uh she will immediately weaponize her gender and say this is because i'm a woman and get it back and then low sales uh, she even somehow claims kind of this weird ownership over this character years after uh leaving the character uh but uh the other thing is that um and uh i'm kind of lazy <laughs> so instead of like using the search function which is a little wonky on twitter i just went to her page and then i scrolled down to yesterday and uh man she tweets all day long every day Every waking moment, she's tweeting hundreds and hundreds of tweets. Um, and one of the things that I thought of is, you know, um, you can't don't trust a writer that tweets that much. Absolutely do not trust a writer that tweets that much because there is no ability to submerge yourself in the story and the character if and this is what I'm guessing she's doing. When she does write, I mean, she only writes a couple books, so most of the most of the uh, most of the month is her real job, which is promoting herself as this kind of special figure, the the goddess of of uh, girls and gays, the um, uh, a La Gale. Like I said, she actually does have some uh, uh, talent, but we really haven't seen it in ten years. Um, her whole career is based on weaponizing her gender, uh, uh, weaponizing identity politics. But, as we have seen recently, SJWs have cast the net so wide, uh, they have uh, made everything problematic, everything can be weaponized, a joke you told 10 years ago can be used to destroy you. Uh, there are no, oh, but there are no jokes, because everything is real. Um, oh, and if you didn't actually say it, you sort of said it. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, so what Gail Simone did is the classic SJW apology, which is really patting herself on the back for being woke. But we're going to see that it's just all a mess. Uh, the thing about SJWs is they form alliances. They don't actually form friendships. They're really bad at actual friendships. Um, so they turn on each other at the drop of a hat. And I mean, at the drop of the hat, as I said, Gail Simone has decided not to prop her career up on merit, but, but by being a defender of gay people and women. By the way, gay guys out there, do you, is, is this who you need protecting you? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so really using people, using groups of people to uh, bolster herself up. Uh, but they'll turn on you at the drop of a hat. But, I mean, Gail Simone has been a defender of gay people for 10, 15 years. 
doesn't matter. <laughs> they will still turn on you at the drop of hat. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna hit many SJW tropes. One of them is how they have to announce the beginning and end of conversations. This is because they do not believe in dialogue. They do not believe in exchanges of idea. They believe in monologue. So their idea of communication is they turn a microphone on and it has a speaker and their message goes out to you and then they turn it off because they do not hear. That's why you'll see uh, Mag say something like, I'm going to start talking, um, but uh, all responses will be muted. Uh, they love to uh, block, mute, brag about blocking, brag, brag about muting. Um, uh, they don't want an exchange of ideas. Why, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because they're, they know that our ideas do not hold up to scrutiny. They know their ideas will not survive basic rigors of debate. Um, so let's just get into it. The background is uh, Gail Simone is writing a terrible uh, Plastic Man miniseries. Um, uh, horribly unfunny. Uh, and in one of her, like the in the 100th terrible joke, she had a plastic man dressed like a woman, Harley Quinn, and you could see a little bulge down in the bikini area. Uh, a dumb joke. Not even dumb like, I thought it was offensive. Dumb like, it's not funny. <laughs> it's just not funny. That kind of stuff was kind of funny like in the 40s through 60s. Hey, hey there's a guy dressed like a girl. It's not funny. Now it's just like, eh, whatever. It, I, you see stuff like that every day on TV. And no one cares. Um... Okay, I have a serious thing to address. Please forgive me if I'm still trying to put my thoughts together. It's regarding... <laughs> I can't, you can't be this fake serious and have the name Plastic Man in the same set. I'm going to try to read it. Uh, so one of the things I'm saying is is uh, Gail Simone is like never sincere. Uh, not only is it a fake name she uses, which is no big deal, but it's a fake persona. Um, it's, I, got, I always describe her as a sitcom villain. Um, so nothing she ever says is sincere. It's always filtered through, you know, this, this, uh, double lens of this is what I want people to, uh, get out of this. And this is the, the character that I am portraying, the Gail Simone character. Okay. I have a serious thing to address. Please forgive me if I am still trying to put my thoughts together. I, I can't do it. I just see Plastic Man on the next sentence and, uh, it's regarding Plastic Man. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. It's 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 just so so oh, it's so deep. You you're still formulating your thoughts about plastic man's bulge. Like, come on. Um please also keep in mind that this series had an unusually long delay be between written and being printed, so my memory is a little hazy. What? Okay, I I read more Gail Simone than anyone else. Everything Gail writes screams first draft um uh it, it's very self-impressed it's very lazy um but the biggest thing is it just isn't interested in itself um I, like i say gail simone's career is being on twitter gail simone's career is not writing um and she makes her money from it but it's kind of like it's a circular thing you know what i mean um this isn't a joke thread it's a serious issue to a lot of people and I want to try to get it right. Okay, so not only has she announced a conversation, but she is in her third tweet in a row, prefacing, preambling, preparing you for, the, for a conversation. Okay, so now we get to the meat. You could have just started here. In issue three of Plastic Man, which barely anyone read, Plastic Man briefly imitates Harley Quinn. In one panel, he clearly has a bit of a bulge, despite otherwise being a pretty clear match for Harley yet. Uh, and... Uh, that was, uh, it's very obvious in the story that it was written in there. It's very, uh, I, I brought this up with Domino, and I confirmed it with a friend who's uh, early 30s. Uh, Gail's just old. <laughs> she's old. Uh, she's, uh, and weirdly, she's older than she is. Oh, by that, I mean she's she's my age. I, I honestly thought she was in her 50s, and a lot of people have corroborated that. But also the way she talks and expresses, it's not even people of our generation talking. It's, again, this is a character. So she talks like an older lady. I feel like she's she's um, patterned herself after one of her own uh, aunts. And so that's why she uses this weird, like, she says, like, get into first base. <laughs> like, I, like I said, I had to talk to a friend of mine. She's in her early 30s. She's like, 
I've, I've, I've only ever heard that phrase like watching 16 candles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so uh, now, my, so what I'm saying is her sense of humor is really dumb and it's really, really old. It's like, hey, uh, uh, Bugs Bunny's dressed like a girl bunny. That's funny because men and women are different. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Now, my read of the scene is one thing. Plath has been imitating other characters for 70 years. He's poke fun at Wonder Woman, Iron Man, My Little Pony, and the Transformers in this series alone. To me, that's the fun. He makes fun of characters more popular than he is. And for me, it's important to note that he doesn't become those characters. Ooh, thanks for getting existential and freaking David Cronenberg about freaking Plastic Man. We're not children, Gail. And also... You're not smarter than any of us. One, one of the, the caveats of, of acting like you're a teacher is, you know, a professor knows more than the students. You don't. No, I would say you're of blazingly average intelligence. Um, uh, he's still himself, even pretending to be Wonder Woman. But yeah, this would be insulting talking to an eight-year-old like this. However, some dear trans friends condescending have pointed out to me that the scene reads entirely different to them why do they have different kind of brains is it, are they seeing the world oh yeah, yeah. Great. So, um there is a common shitty trope out there floating around and in fiction too about trans people tricking or luring unsuspecting people it's a shitty garbage myth and it's gross and disgusting and it has okay first of all that's partly true you see that in a million times in like advice columns. It's like, I'm trans. I'm dating a guy. He doesn't know. What should I do? I literally saw someone sharing that on Twitter like yesterday. That stuff happens. Um, this, this is one of the other things about uh, defenders of gays is they uh, do this thing where they uh, uh, demonize them. Or no, uh, they, uh, what was the, what's the opposite of demonizing? Hagiography. Hey, it's making them saints. There was this thing, uh, I, I uh, one of the things, um, they used to talk about this five, ten years ago. Is they're like, uh, gays only hit on other gays. It's like, not true. <laughs> if you know any gay people, one of the biggest, especially for lesbians, one of the biggest prizes they have in their life is I converted this straight girl. Like, they love it. It's A lot of it's just logistics. When you are 1% of the population, uh, which all gays of, you know, the legitimate studies show that all gays of every stripe is like 3% of the population. Which means lesbians is like one percent. Your your dating possibilities are extremely limited, so you're out are out there converting, um, uh, or trying to convert. Um, so uh, again, it, it's uh, so um, it's a shitty garbage myth, and it's gross and disgusting. You are in your forties. You're not in freaking elementary school. Gross garbage disgusting this is this is how third graders talk um and some people read that page as plastic man perpetuating that fucking trope unnecessary cursing trying to seduce man bat yeah no 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 normal person saw this i've read all three issues and i read them to review them which means i actually pay attention the the elephant in the room is that the not no part of that scene made sense there's a stupid subplot where a guy got killed and he scrawled JLA, some minor league gangster, some 1940s gangster in the modern world, scrolled JLA. So we're supposed to say, oh, the JLA killed this guy. Like anyone would believe that. Now I'm sure it's going to be some dumb thing where that's someone's name, initials, or if you if you hold it up to a mirror, it looks like three different letters or something stupid. Um, so then we got like uh, him, Plastic Man, at the docks, and he was chasing this guy where the silhouette looked like Batman, but oh my gosh, it was Man Bat. And then in the beginning of the next issue, he's Harley Quinn with a bulge, and he's like saying, "What do I have to do to get your attention?" But they just had a fight, and they're standing right in front of each other. It, it does. It's like in the middle of a of a conversation where someone's you know back and forth talking to you. If you all of a sudden you say like, "Hi, my name is Zach. Would you like to start talking to me?" They're like, "We were already we, we were five minutes into a conversation. We were talking about Highlander two and Van Helsing and 
I haven't been quiet. We've been talking the whole time. Like what you just said does not make sense. Um, what what I meant as a little fun poke at a character I like a lot. It, it's not a fun poke. It's, this is her der like garbage cheer, not written by Seth MacFarlane Family Guy humor. Hey, that's the thing that I know, and I saw it, and it's funny because I know it. That the girl in the Suicide Squad's movie, and that, but it's a man. That's funny because the man's a woman. Like it's it's not a fun little poke. It's stupid, like nineteen seventies humor. Harley Quinn reads very differently to the people who have to live with this trash myth. Okay, so you're basing this whole thing on a bunch of weirdos who get offended by everything. I was going to say anything. I'm changing it to everything. Uh, misinterpreting this in a way that no one would. Um, the, the actual way to misinterpret this is to say uh, the point of the joke is that it's funny when men dress as women, which actually could be offensive to trans people. But they realize that it's kind of a trope of comedy, and it's it's not even so. The, so they like they like upped the I'm offended uh, bit. I know people who read the scene, same scene differently. All I can say is, with one hundred percent surety, that is absolutely not my intention. It would never even cross my mind. The trans community gets far too much shit already. But that isn't really important. What's important here is the trans community. Condescending. Uh, and to them, I'm sorry for this page. We're going to try and get it adjusted for the TPB. Plastics Man's emotional core in this series is trying to protect a gender-fluid kid. The last thing I want to do is hurt or poke fun at trans people. Okay, so... They're going to be offended no matter what you do. (laughs) One of the key tropes, one of the key traits of SJWs is they don't believe in forgiveness. Ever. For any reason. Also, how are you going to adjust it? Is, are you going to adjust it so there's not a bulge? Because it's still a man pretending to be a woman and trying to get a guy to notice him. Man bat. Or are you just going to redo, are you going to get rid of all, are you going to redo the, the language? Is it going to say, something completely different like well, what are you gonna do this is a trash tape trade paperback that nobody's gonna buy like this series sucks why even put out a trade paperback oh and the other thing about is there is this character who has this really weird cringy name um uh and then in the third one they made this reference to the kid being trans or gender fluid uh the kid is very very clearly a tomboy Tomboys have existed for all of history. It's not a big deal to be a tomboy. I don't know why why creepos want some eight-year-old to make a lifetime decision. Um, uh, And I do appreciate the friends who voice their concern. I will do better. (laughs) Be better. Be better. Um... So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, there's the main one was this one, uh, uh, Natalie Reed, 84, who is getting all up in arms about it. Maybe that's on the, uh, on the first one. Most people usually just respond to the first one. How do I, what? Wait, is this a response? Oh my gosh. Old guy figuring out technology. Uh, anyway, but you get the point. Something that no, uh, Normal person could be offended by weirdos pretended to be offended by. They didn't even like because they don't human very well. One of the things SJWs is they always have to overplay their hand. It can never say this is mildly offensive. This or or more. This is outdated humor. Um, it has to be. Uh, it can't just be. Oh, doing the joke that a man looks like a woman and that's funny is kind of old fashioned because that's saying that. It's one of those threads you pull on and the whole sweater unravels. So what you're saying is the trans people are ridiculous. But really, it's just a dumb joke. Obviously not meant with any spite um, by someone who's supposedly been an ally for 10 years and yet they will draw at the top of a hat. The thing to apologize for uh, is not this fake uh, offense. Um, It's for getting on the stage when comic shops are dying. Uh, what is it, the tent uh, where my dad lives, Lynchburg, uh, is um, six days away from having zero comic shops. 
And you got people like Gail Simone, who absolutely are not trying, who only do first drafts of their books and just don't care because their career is really on Twitter being fake cutesy and talking about uh, you know fake uh, controversies. Um, uh, one of the bits I saw, and I see this all the time, somebody showed me a screenshot, is SJWs will bring something up and say, well, what's comics? What does it matter? Why are you getting so worked up? I really actually really care about comics. <laughs> I really, really do. It's a big part of my life. I love them. Gail does not. Gail ca uh, cares about being La Gale. Natalie Reed and these handful of other people who got fake offended, they care about the attention they get for being fake offended. Meanwhile, stores are out of going out of business. There's less uh, opportunity. This is a whole section of America that now has zero comic book shops because of people like Gail. Uh, you don't have to apologize for people being fake offended. Um, you can just ignore them. Um, but also, this wasn't really an apology. It was a way for Gail to figure out a way to pat herself on about for being so woke. That also doesn't sell comics. And it's not It's not funny. It's not fun. So tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about uh, uh, fake apologies. Tell me uh, about the stores that are dying in your uh, area because uh, uh, SJWs have turned uh, comics into a... a a closed club for alt lifestyle freakazoids and uh, the church of the perpetually offended. And they don't just want to entertain. <laughs> that should be the, that should be the apology. I'm sorry. That wasn't funny. I'm really not funny. And I keep telling these jokes and nobody will stop me. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. giving to the super chat, the Patreon and the Indiegogo, the link for our job breakers, lost souls in the description. That's going to be open for a couple more weeks. And I will have more new comic reviews up later today. Thanks. Bye.